everybody welcome back this is our last ever video for the Carthage let's play we're doing in the old DEI so we got a nice slightly longer video for you about 50 nearly 50 minutes you know yes we wanted to make it extra we wanted to make it a extra special length think of this like the series or season finale of our campaigns let's just yes. say as of the recording of this uh, we, I have started recording footage for our Seleucid Let's Play using the 1.3. And we apologise for the extra special delays, dear viewers. Yes. Multiple, multiple different circumstances of which we cannot control or could not control just had us keep getting in the way. I was basically. yes. Uh, work had me in for what, eight days consecutively because they're sneaky bastards. Give you a long I weekend. had relatives over, and then yeah. I ended up coming home later. Dissipated. Basically, the universe was against us getting from the this very done. moment we tried but to we finish We are finally getting it done, and we are having two armies versus two armies, uh, the Idrisians. Ooh, interesting. Yes, this is before the Idrisians got their nice little rework. Uh, it, they got overhauled in 1.3. Oh, so what's the, what were the upgrades like? Oh, let me see now. I'm trying to remember all the differences. Ah, uh, you've been away from this for far too long. Well, it's just because it's been a while since I played pre 1.3 DEI. So, Thracian Rum Fire Warriors were made a little stronger in the 1.3 up oh, from 1.3, but were brought up to be Class 1 nobles. All right. The therefore the noble Rumfire warriors were only just reserved to be a general's bodyguard. In addition, you could actually upgrade your Rumfire warriors into the late Rumfire warriors uh, as of thorax reform, something you couldn't do prior. The Thracian footmen were brought down to be class three. And they could get upgraded into Toreo swords rather than being two separate units. Uh, you lost that. There were no more Thracian spearmen and Toreo spears. Instead, you got long spear Peltas, which in Toreo's forms became long spear Toreo Poroi. Also, your Toreo swords and Thorax forms became a kind of Toraki tie. They lost their Thoraki tie and instead got a sort of quasi thorax swords that are 300 strong and a bit lighter than regular thorax swords. Uh, they also, must be, they got. They must be easier to handle though, if that's the case. <sighs> also, uh. Oh, sorry. Um, they, 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 they lost access to any sort of Thracian pike. Or hoplite units. Instead, you got Greek colonist hoplites and pikemen, and the colonist hoplites could become thorax spears, and a few other changes. Uh, Is it any better though? I mean, it's just like... play. They play differently, and a bit more unique. Jenny, don't think it is a pure. This is better. It's just this is different and it makes them more unique Ooh. but i guess like um i guess what i mean is like seeing as how they have their these upgrades are basically a new unique way for the armies to operate i guess i'm just curious if these changes are implemented for the better or for the worse i suppose um i guess for the better in making them kind of more special and unique for the worse, if you will, is that you don't always have some of the nifty units that you did have in the past that you might have been attached to. You know, like your Toreo Spears or your Thorax troops, for example. I guess that's a fair point. Uh, but again, the Long Spear Peltas are kind of neat and conceptually pretty cool. And as I talked before, I think it's one of those things that, how to put this, it throws people off 
in the sense of that the idea is strange to those that have a very, I guess I call it a narrow view of what Peltasts were, which I've talked about before. Yeah, uh, yeah, I remember. Peltasts are envisioned as being just javelin-armed skirmishers when they were more than that. Uh, granted, they generally, and I suppose in a Greek context, even then it's complicated. I think the thing is, ancient authors, so far as I understood, use the term in different ways and then different meanings. You could even use the term to refer to the Macedonian-style pike troops. Because they had a pelte. Or peltai, if you're talking plural in this case. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, so, you know. Uh, yeah, lately, <laughs> I've come across... Uh, I came across a little while ago a channel called Ancient History Guy. Yeah? What's he like? I don't think he's very good. No? Oh, no. okay. I think his research is sloppy. So what does he go over exactly? Does he just go over general historical facts in a rather bland manner or something? Well, I guess what I suppose... I, he kind of talks about different topics of ancient history. Uh, you know, a lot of even you have specific military units. So I first came across him... So I watched his video of Cretan arches and found myself quite disappointed. He kind of gets a few things wrong, but just leaves out a lot of interesting information. So he basically just goes over the bare bones of Kind of. These are sometimes quite short videos. How short are we talking about? I think his Cretan arches video was like... Yeah. In max total, was it maybe three minutes? Three minutes? That's, and that's not an awful lot. Yeah, I, let me see. Uh, I can quickly look. Because, I mean, like, if you're going over something as important as that, I mean, like, you're going to need to dedicate more minutes to talking about Oh, yeah, about I, I would agree. So, let me see. Uh, there's being a I'll be on about that now. Okay, so, let me just see. Uh, Cretan Archers, Cretan Archers. Uh... Oh, it's a bad metal worker. Six minute video on that. Jeez. Uh, or what were Celtic headhunters? Seven minute video. Uh, how did the Celts expand out of Switzerland? Seven you go, and eight minutes. Because you got YouTubers like. Uh, okay, his video on Cretan Archers is about four <clears throat> minutes long, and it's more close to three and a half at most in actual talk about the topic. Three minutes. And, you know, it's like, some bits are fine, like, were they light, were they lightly geared ranged soldiers that used composite bows? Yes, that much is true. But... Because I know it's not exactly in the same, I know it's not exactly within the same range. You've got YouTubers like the Cynical Story, so like they go over the history of some of the uh, things of the events yeah, that are in certain movies. Cynical. And even then, like, you have video lengths that range between 20 to 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, like... Cynical Historian is a trained historian. Uh, PhD. Exactly, yeah. And you can Although tell he still his gets... His videos he are has, usually within... I guess, uh, the thing here, though, is like, he has his specialty. That's American history, particularly in the more modern stuff, I believe, is his area. And, yeah, I think the way I understand it is the best kind of history tube channels are the ones that are very specialised. The ones that have their own sort of unique flair to them, basically. More about in terms of the periods and the topics. They have a specific strict area of topic they discuss and they generally don't deviate from it. And they generally just also have an interesting way of their own unique, let's just say, or interesting way of depicting or illustrating some of these So events. I guess the thing is, like, you put it like this, like, extra credits are not the most respected, at least among the Reddit side of history, because they get a lot of shit wrong. Part of the problem is they cover just wide different topics and areas. Even uh, and They generally don't tend to be entirely reliable. But, for the like, most part. also, but also, you got a channel like Overly Sarcastic Productions, where Blue as he's called, he's 
trained in classics, like myself. But he tries to make a 10, maybe 15 minute video covering, like he did, I think, a, a video on like Indian history. I'm just thinking, oh, like, a f history of the Roman Empire video from Ancient to Guy. Guess how long it is. How long is this? Five minutes, 46 seconds. Jesus. That's yeah, really did. fucking short for oh, something, you know, of that vast, vast scope. History of Ancient Iran, 6 minutes 48 seconds. Okay, I shouldn't be so harsh on the length aspect, but that is a bit sus to me. But like, I guess, like... I, I guess the other thing is, I looked at even, like, what he, he does actually cite sources. In his descriptions, he places sources. But it's like, on so far what I've gathered and looked at a few of the videos. It's like... He, there's two sources he uses consistently. It's the Encyclopedia Britannica and worldhistory.org. Now, I've looked at the, 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 the worldhistory.org articles and some of the topics that he has referenced it for. And they don't seem too bad. They They're... provide sources. They, the information is reasonable enough from what I can tell. Uh, at a yeah, glance. but at the same time, those are kind of more generalized yes. websites. Yes, like, that's that's uh, that's perhaps well, that's my bigger issue. Like even in the video, Cretan Archers, he's clearly talking about events that are that are in things like Xenophon's Anabasis. Uh, the Anabasis is a story by a Greek historian called Xenophon. So the Anabasis story by Xenophon is about Greek mercenaries, including Xenophon, when they were in Persia. Uh, helping the Persian Prince Cyrus the Younger. He dies in a failed revolt against his brother, and they're trying to get back home. Yeah, I mean, now, like... the Ancient History Guy talks about events in the analysis, but I got a good... F I had a strong feeling he probably didn't even read the fucking analysis. I just felt like he's probably referencing somebody else's summary of the analysis. Like, I've read... Like... I've read most of the analysis... A good load of it. So I'm like, I know some of the stuff he's talking about. He talks about how they got shields when they were fighting for the Romans. And I'm like, what? They even mention is I think the Anabasis mentions them having fucking shields. They they trick a, a Persian force or whatever uh, into thinking there was an ambush being made by having the light shine off the bronze shields they had. Yeah, I mean like. In my opinion, you're better off going to sites like uh, Google Scholar you know, if you want to get like really in-depth articles. Oh, yeah. That's the that thing. Because... For me, I guess I'd be like, okay, if I were to try and cover such a topic, I'd probably want to not make it a fucking four-minute video. No, of course would, not, but at the I same would, time, would, you want to make would, sure that you've would, got lots of information to yes, work off of. I would rely on what ink sources I could gather. I know the analysis is the one on top of my head. I know it would be one source. But even in regards to modern sources... I would probably immediately have my head, I'd have Jean-Charles Duplessis and Nicholas Secunda who talk for Cretan archers. I could probably use Hans van Wies for other general information relating to Greek warfare. Because I probably would want to set them up in the context of Greek warfare at the time. Um, and even other little interesting factoids. You know, I guess that's the way I would want to discuss it and look at it. Because I think the one thing that I just felt like is an important thing regarding Cretan archers is... Yes, they had really good bows that would have given them a good range on paper, but their arrows were heavy. You know, the arrows were heavy, so yeah, yeah. they didn't have as good of a range. And in the Anabasis, when the Greek forces are being attacked by Persian archers and slingers, the Cretans, doing their best, and these were definitely very skilled archers, were struggling because they were outranged by the Persians. And he kind of, on the one hand, seems to say that near the end of his video. But on the other hand, it kind of was something he said, he implied that they had really good range or something. I don't know. I just feel like there's certain details are just a bit like, what? 
and then just the details he just omits probably because his sources didn't have them because he's using two fucking web pages as a source or as, as yeah. his sources not even reading the ancient stuff you can probably find online for nothing you know yeah, I mean, ancient I'm... authors old translations of ancient works of most of them online for free you know, and seemingly doesn't even bother with that. Mm. Yeah, I admit, well, like, I, I, I admit when doing some of my essays, I, 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 I did have a bit of an issue with someone's not always jumping to the ancient source, but I've learned over time to start looking into the ancients more directly. Yeah, and, um, like, whenever I had to do research for, like, uh, certain classes in regards to film analysis, or just, like, general sorts of uh, patterns in regards to certain films or types of films, usually what I would do is I would usually go on to Google Scholar, and I would look up a ton of articles online, and just type in, a, so I would go on the search bar and just uh, type in the keywords that I'd be looking yeah. for, and... Yeah, I just basically go with the articles that were most up to date. It just yeah. at least were published by professional yeah. what writers, I would, or at least what people I was, who were like yeah. what were I was well doing, known and, are, and have already been yeah. published before, basically. Yeah, you know, I, so those I, are the kinds of uh, those are the kinds of sources that I feel like oh, you yeah. should when I, you when should I, probably take more into account, I suppose. Yeah, when I was doing my college assignments, I suppose a lot of the times. They provided sources for you to look at in my bachelor's. Yeah, they, they provided a lot of the articles, academic articles and book chapters, or even full books, that you could use and references to the ancient sources. But even when doing my master's, there was a lot more emphasis on me having to find this stuff myself. You know, they'd recommend some sources that you could check. But you kind of have to rely on using some of your own stuff. And I happen to have a lot of books, which helped. You know. Uh, so you I just don't go. You also rely on your own ingenuity as well, basically. Yeah. And sometimes I'd have to look up some of these things. I'd look up in JSTOR a lot of the time. I've never really needed to use JSTOR for most of my research, so, like. See, I always. JSTOR was my go to place to look for articles. Mine was always just Google Scholar. But we JSTOR, did all, JSTOR has articles, so that's the thing. You just save it from JSTOR. I just never really bothered to use JSTOR, honestly. Evidently so, as you've just said. But I always relied on JSTOR. That was always very... And that and academia.edu can be kind of nifty. Oh, yeah, academia.edu. I usually relied on that as well. Yeah. And some of the niche stuff, I can probably find stuff on academia. Uh, which is handy, but yeah. But, uh, yeah, I suppose we should come to what the hell is happening. <laughs> We're demolishing yes, the enough, of, enough of the history lessons. What's actually going on in history? Well, at the moment, we are fighting the Thracians, and it's a pretty tough battle. Unfortunately, we have? Un unfortunately, um, yeah, the quality is not very good, and that couldn't be helped. I was using what was... A pretty, I guess, compared to my current PC, kind of a potato PC. A potato PC. Okay. I was well, doing the best I. I was doing the best I could with what I had, but I was limited in my limited resources. That's all right. Yeah, I think we've actually found. The viewers will. The viewers will be appreciative and understanding, right, guys? Hopefully. Well, we've won the battle and we're in the routing phase. Well, that's handy. Spreading out now, like ants on a hill. Yes. So we're whittling them all down. But yeah, so I guess to sum things up, ancient history guy, I think he's very sloppy and lazy rather than sloppy, but lazy in his research. But there I, is room for. Basically, he, there's room for improvement, I think. I suppose, yes. I just feel like, you know, you could just do better if you're doing this stuff you've got a niche area that you're covering great and I'm not saying there's no effort put into his stuff it just seems like he's lazy in that all he really does is read web pages and cite them as his sources 
and that's all he does. At least that's all he seems to suggest he does. Cause that's all he fucking cites. Like if he just did a little, if he just added in a few more sources and not just skim through them or something, that could like, be very it's, helpful. It's, if, I if, think. He was, if he read maybe some books or read some articles on these topics, you can find them. You know, even general audience stuff like Nick Secunda. When I mentioned Nick Secunda, that's in a book by Osprey, which are kind of very much for like enthusiasts not really for academic stuff you know yeah, nothing suppose. wrong with Osprey books of course they're, they're, they're nifty and they're handy but they're not like rigorous academic dense stuff they're light somewhat picture heavy books largely written by academics about various topics uh, military related often and they're nifty, they're handy. Yeah, of course. Uh, maybe not always perfect, of course, but you know, even something like that is 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 something to use. I would have a bit more handy information, and they would have references that you could rely on more on. You know, I just kind of feel like I guess it's just been on my mind more, and I guess a part of me's been tempted to want to make something on it. I don't know if that's a post in r slash bad history. He's actually been featured on bad history. He has? Yeah, somebody did a post. He apparently did, he did a video about why the Persians didn't adapt to fighting the Greeks or something. And it got featured on bad history. r slash bad oh, shit. history. Oh, uh, shit. Okay. Uh, the person doing the review was a little snarky. <laughs> I think they... they there's a little animation picture of ancient guy reading a book and the person was like <laughs> one of the errors it is is him reading a book clearly hasn't read a book or some shit like that <laughs> uh, but Smooth. yeah um, even some people are looking at it, it's like has it a very short video about the Peloponnesian War uh, <laughs> let me see can I find it and, and See, can I find he has a Let's see um yeah. oh well that's happening I might as well point history out history of the Gallic Wars is four and a half minutes ouch okay uh you know let's start uh... weapons the Gladius Hispanicus I'm pretty sure it's Gladys what? Hispanensis, not Gladys Hispanicus. What? I'm just going to actually right. look this at is... that. Well, it's just strange because it's normally called Gladys Hispanensis. But we'll just see. Uh, I'm, just, I'm trying to see, can I find even uh, his video about the Peloponnesian... I know somebody pointed out in the video of the Peloponnesian War. History of Ancient England, five, nearly six minutes long. Wow, much detail. The Greco-Persian Wars is four minutes. Uh, the Assyrian War Chariot. Oh, and we have a decisive victory on our end. Yep, we had the advantage, so yeah. Yeah. You should, have seen, you should have seen us. We were standing over the bodies of our victims with joyful glee. <laughs> yes. And we're heading off to meet the Heralds of Death over by Odessa, Odessa now. Odessos. Odessos. And we royally, He's got... we royally kick their arses, let's just say. I'm just seeing here who wrote the Iliad, a 2 minute 45 second video. Wait, he seriously made a video about that? You know, I can... Okay, so the thing with the Iliad is... Yeah, who wrote it is actually kind of an interesting question. Because... Whilst we say, oh, Homer... As far as I know, there's a bit of debate and certainly as to who was Homer. Was Homer even an actual person? How does this and the whole idea about oral history and oral tradition come in well, and factual I mean, like, that wasn't in? Wasn't Homer confirmed to have written the Odyssey? I don't think there's any confirmation of anything. Really? 
all we have is I think tradition that says there was a dude called Homer who wrote these stories. But I think even the dialects are a mixture of dialects that the stories are in. So there's no real I mean, way to know if Homer was a real person or not? Effectively. Well, I mean, like, someone had someone had to write those stories, you know? I uh, think, but the thing is, you're talking about probably somebody who wrote it centuries, maybe, after the story. I think the thing is, like, that these are based off of oral tradition. So oh, like, yeah, that, that's a good point, actually. Okay, who fought the Peloponnesian War? You know, there's that I'm seeing here. 3 minutes 27 seconds. Oh, and I see we're attacking the Basilian Odrysian over Malva. Basilion, Basilion Odrysian, which means Odrysian Kingdom. And the oh. army that we're fighting is the Wrath of Sebasios. The Wrath of Sebasios? Yeah. Oh, never heard of these guys before. Well, that's the name of the army. It's just a random name. But Sebasios was a god. What was he the god of? I think a sky god or something, because the name means sky father. Oh, right. That's interesting. It's just, I think, probably the way it ended up in Thracian. Sabazios. Uh, Sabazios. Sky father god of the Phrygians and Thracians. Um... Yeah. Z uh, not Sigma, not uh, Zeta. Silly me. Sabazios. If you wanted to. Yeah, Sabazios. If you want to read in the rather particularly antiquated pronunciation of Zeta. Because Zeta used to sound more like a Z before it eventually became to just turned to a Z. But yeah, uh, yeah, basically a sky father god. Mm. To the so, so who yeah. are we facing off against here? It's the Adrisians, so they're Thracian spearmen, uh, Rumphire warriors, I would say. There's a lot of spearmen. You know. Uh, so I'm seeing there's a lot of spearmen. Some cavalry, of course. Should they have to have something to represent their egos? Okay. So, fact is, a topic like who wrote the Iliad is going to be a bit more complicated than a near three minute video. Oh, yeah, because I mean, like, there's. You not only have the. Uh, not only have the debate as to who actually wrote these stories in the first place, but then there's just the general events and historical events that happen in the Iliad itself as well, you know? The thing so the Iliad like... is, have you read the Iliad? No, I've never read the Iliad before. I've read, a part, I've read like, the first, up to about the first six books. <laughs> in all of my history classes, I never, I surprisingly never once had to read any bit of the Iliad. I've read, as I say, up to about maybe book five or six of the Iliad. What was it like? Uh, it's interesting enough. I just had to move on to the Odyssey. I know. That's that's also another thing. Like I never once in my any of my history classes ever had to read the Odyssey. Well, you see, I did a module called Warn the Hero, which was about the Iliad, Odyssey, and Aeneid. Ah, uh, right. So I had to read them to an extent. Is I'm actually kind of curious. Did you ever have to watch the movie? Did you ever have to watch the movie Troy? Actually, I did not have to watch it, though I had watched it years before. <laughs> I was kind of curious. Like, I mean, it's a fine little film and everything, but I'll just say this: the Iliad is not about the Trojan War. Oh. Do you know, okay. do you know when it begin? When the story begins? Near the end. When of does the it war. begin? Near the end of the war. Oh. Okay. It's about the characters of the Trojan War, like Achilles and the wrath of Achilles. You know? Yeah, yeah, I know who Achilles is. It's about Achilles and his wrath. Oh, 
and okay. all the different characters that associate in it. Um, you know, like, if you want, I can try to pull it out and read the first little bit of book one. By Homer. Well, maybe Homer. Oh, I've not opened this in a long time. When was the last time you opened it? When I had to study it. <laughs> Which is my first year at uni. You know. Uh, I would like to read it properly. If you have the time, maybe you should. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely should. Okay, here we go. I'm getting... To, okay, here we go. I'm in the text. So the first paragraph, which I guess sums the beginning of the story. I should tell you, this is a poem. It's an epic poem. So there's no once upon a time. Oh, but I love my once upon a times. Sing, goddess of the anger of Achilles, son of Peleus, the accursed anger which brought un uncounted anguish on the Achaeans and then hurled down to Hades many mighty souls of heroes, making their bodies the prey to dogs and the birds feasting. And this is the working of Zeus's will. Sing from the time the first quarrel with di which divided Atreus' son, the lord of men and godlike Achilles. Which of the gods was it who set these two to their fighting? It was the son of Zeus and Leto. In anger at the king, he raised a vile plague throughout the army and the people were dying because the son of Atreus had dishonored Chryses, his priest. Uh, yeah, it's just, so that's the thing. It's just right smack in the middle of things. It just begins with saying, yeah, here's shit happening. I know it's not that much, but... but in media is basically. Yeah. Book one would probably be take take about probably an hour to read. What about the other books? Uh, in my experience, similar amount of time. And do you know how many books there are? Six, didn't you say? No, I just read up to six. How many books are there? Like 12? twenty-four. Twenty-four. Jesus. I should say this: book equals chapter. Oh, oh, how how many pages would a chapter have? If it comes, it's like a whole book. Well, see, think about this. It's not a book in our sense of book. So it's basically It's like, a book in an ancient sense of a book. Oh, so they would pronounce a book as like a chapter or something. Well, I guess to put it like this, the best way to put it is this. In the ancient times, they didn't have books like we have books. They didn't divide them up into what we would call chapters? The better way to put it is this. The book we have is... It's not the way they had it. Their books were effectively just like a single scroll of like papyrus or something. Uh huh. That was a book. And thus, it's not the same. Uh, so, therefore, a book then is the equivalent to probably several of our pages, modern day pages. Yeah, yeah, I figured thus, as much. Because they generally had to tell a somewhat of a certain narrative, aspect of a narrative, within this book, uh, that meant that we would roughly consider that a chapter. They generally functioned like chapters, but, you know, they're books. It's a conventional thing. So when I say books, I don't mean it's... I know the re the listeners can't see this. It's, it's just... It's just a big... I think it was a big novel of 24 chapters. Yeah, exactly. It's just that we call those chapters books because in ancient times they were probably, they roughly matched up to one whole piece of like scroll of papyrus or something. Yeah, and like, correct me if I'm wrong or not, but I believe what they used to do back during those times was like, they would have these like uh, readers uh, read them out to the general public on a large piece of scroll or something. And they well, would certainly the one thing is not everybody could read and write. Of course, absolutely. You know, literacy was limited. People may have had some degree of literacy, but not enough. Not a huge amount. That's probably why they had, that's probably why they had plays to supplement for that. Well, just, that's entertainment, but I guess in that lane, you know, people relied on things, you know. So I'm sure that, like, 
Well, I'm sure they, there must have been plays about the Iliad. You know, oh, yeah, definitely. In the, one of these I guess you could put stories, it this, like for people well, who were suppose, illiterate. Yeah, well, I suppose put it like this. The Trojan, the Iliad is not the only story about the Trojan War. No, I, I completely It's just, that it's that. one of the more significant ones, but there are many stories about that topic. It was a popular story to tell with different interpretations. Oh, and I see we have a decisive victory here. Yes, we defeated the Thracians there. And we trespass on Getai lands, but, you know. Well, we don't give a shit about that, do we? Well, we don't want to fight the Getai. You know, we don't want to fight the Getai. But, you know, not like they can really be that much of a threat anyways. Well, that was easier than expected. <laughs> At this point, we can just steamroll. <laughs> so here we have a naval battle. I haven't had one of those in a while. Yeah, Playing against the Basilion or Drissian again. Yes. There. Odrison. Basilion Odrison. In Mar. Mer. Mare. Mare. Agaium. The Aegean Sea. Agaium. Alright. The, the Aegean Sea. So yeah, we have our big heavy artillery ships with some big ramming ships and a few archer ships. But yeah, like I was saying earlier, like for people who were illiterate during those times, because you were mentioning how not a lot of an awful lot of people could read or write back then. I assume that's why they had those plays, especially in in like forms of adaptations of some of these books. Because I know yeah. Iliad and the Odyssey weren't the only books to cover this general range of history but i guess what i'm saying I is guess like think of it as less history and more just story because even oh, no. the, the other thing with the idiot is this okay the gods take a very proactive role in the conflict you know they are i was always under the impression that like the gods were more like um they general are, overseers no they they were hands-on in this affair like, even when I just talked a bit about that Priest of Apollo, okay? I'll summarize this bit of book one, okay? So, the, the, the Greeks have attacked this particular area, and they've taken a lot of captives. There's been a lot of women who are basically their sex slaves. Uh -huh. One of them was a girl uh, named, I think, who was the daughter... I think Chryseis, I think was the name. She's the daughter of a priest of Apollo. And what happens is her father comes at a big ransom and says, Here, could you please, here's a big ransom. Could you please free my daughter? And she was specifically the, the, the slave of Agamemnon, the king of Mycenae, the main leader of the Greek coalition. Uh -huh. And Agamemnon stubbornly says, No. I will not do so. Get lost or I will kill you, in essence. So the priest prays to Apollo. And you know what happens? What happens? Apollo comes down and shoots an arrow into the Greek camp, bringing plague upon them. Jesus, okay. So this forces Agamemnon to relent and give her back. But of course, he still kind of needs to have his... It's kind of bound into his honour that he still needs to have... You know... Some sort of prize. So he takes Achilles' prize, a girl called Briseis. And that's what angers Achilles. So he refuses to fight. And this happens for much of the story. I think that even as he's fighting with Agamemnon over this matter, Athena comes down and drags him away to stop him from killing Agamemnon, if I remember correctly. I think Ares physically manifests and helps in the fight, and Aphrodite is kind of responsible for some of the conflict happening anyways. So like, in the Iliad, the gods are very proactive. You know, it's not just like it's 
it's not really trying to be some grounded historical story about war between Troy and Greece. It's, it's not, more it, it's more it's, propped up for entertainment value. Basically. It's a story. The thing is that we don't know what, if any of it, is true to actual history. All we can really say is there was a there was a city that existed, which was called Willusa. It was in mod in Turkey, modern day Turkey. It's possibly a Luwian city, but you know, it's all we can say for sure is that <clears throat> it's. A city uh, in modern day Turkey called Willusa. And the thing is that there's some inscript Hittite evidence that suggests that the people of Willusa were in conflict with people called the Akeawa, which are Achaeans, the Greeks, it seems. I suppose, yeah. And some names that match up are probably some characters in it. So there's like some evidence that the city, and so where this connection to Troy is that Troy was also called Ilios. Oh, alright then. That's what's called the Iliad. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is though, in some Greek dialects that still had the wa sound, it was Willios. So you see the connection to that and this Willusa. Yeah, yeah, I can see them. So, what happens is that there's some evidence that there was a city that we could now call Troy, that we could call Troy, that existed and was in maybe some conflict or set of conflicts with the mice, with Greeks. But there's nothing to definitively prove that this was the case. To was definitively there? prove the story of the Iliad. But we know that, like, the, we know, like, the aftermaths of some of, we basically know the aftermath of what happened. Basically. Well, no, we just know the city existed and it probably came into a few clashes with Greeks. I, I guess that's kind of what I meant to say in regards to the aftermath. Because it's like, uh, but, we know... the, but the evidence, so far as archaeological evidence suggests, it was more damaged by earthquakes, destroyed by earthquakes or something like that. Sure, that could just be one possibility, you know. I think they come to that, you know, likely. I think that's the likely explanation, so far as I've understood. Again, I'm not super versed in all the nuances of the archaeology to this. This is not really my area so much, but that's what I've understood. I think the evidence is not very likely that it was destroyed by conflict. But where's the evidence that suggests that it was destroyed by earthquakes? I, mean, I don't like... know exactly, other than I think that there's probably ways to determine how destruction patterns of settlements can indicate earthquakes, natural disasters, or um, you know. I mean, like, who's to say that earthquakes conflict. weren't just one? One extra bit that called but these the layers. They can just they can kind of understand the different layers of of um what do you call it of the seven what time periods um you know. So I'm just having a, like, uh, a look through this video from that dude I'm talking about, just seeing what else he's got. Well, while you're looking, while you're looking for that, I might as well point out that the assaulting raiders are not doing very good on their end. No, but well, we have effectively won. So the battle was won before it even started. <laughs> oh, so yes. I think that's probably our last conflict. Yeah, and after In that, the region of ours, effectively. 
Okay, so five years ago you did a video of the Greek hop light, two and a half minutes. A Jeez. three minute video on the Celtic Warrior. Now that I'm gonna have to see. <laughs> yeah, I <like> bet. <laughs> the Roman has stati, two minutes, two and a half minutes. Principes, Triadii, Wedites, these are all like from many years ago, but I'm actually curious to see. In fairness, you'd be hard pressed to really screw up talking about the Romans at this time period. I suppose. But please, at least, uh, you should have at least read Polybius. No, I never had to read that. I'm not talking to you though. But all the same though, I never had to read that myself. Yeah, you probably because you probably never had to study the Roman military. Pretty, pretty much no. <laughs> Whereas I have, so I've read Polybius Book Six. You know, not the most perfect source, but it's still a decent source. So I'm gonna have a look at these. Just so curious, how bad would it be? Shouldn't be too bad, because I, I don't think you really get this so seriously wrong. Suppose not. Okay, let's see his sources. Okay. Um, about history, 2018, Marian Army reforms. Okay, but Marian reforms are not really a thing. Uh, yes, you'll just have to see the Manipulator formation from ancient Dotty U and the Roman army from well, ancient encyclopedia. I am sure that you're aware. You know, so just yeah. online resources. Well, the more important Anyways. news, we're done. Yes. So sorry, I was so distracted with this. Uh, but listen. Viewers, thank you so much for joining us on this journey, and we really enjoyed doing these videos with you, and we look yes. forward to seeing you again in our Seleucid campaign, actually. Yes, we have that, and the quality will be better, I, 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 at least in terms of the video quality. Uh, you can you can be rest assured on that. There'll probably still be a bit of fine-tuning in some things. Uh, might need to get some visuals just better but overall yeah I think it'll be better quality we'll hope to have the first video up in a few weeks time after this video upload uh, I whenever recorded... that'll be yeah <laughs> uh, but yes thank you very much for watching this if you've gotten this far uh, much appreciated and as always be sure to leave a comment like and subscribe and we will see you all well, whenever our next video is up. Yeah. But thank you. But thank you so much for joining us on our campaign of yes, carts. And, and we will see you soon. Did you just say cart? Say the yes, full I name. I, I can't say the full name. You say it for me. Say it. Carthadestim, okay? Carthadestim. 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 Just end the fucking recording, will you? Okay, thanks for watching.